Welcome back, drivers. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. However, this time it's about a different subject, and that's material handling. Tim talked to you and covered well in the slip, trip, and fall presentation that he gave. And honestly, I wish, and I, and I did write him a letter, but he didn't come in here because I thought the perfect person to actually give this presentation would be Jim Carrey because he would show you all the ways not to handle materials correctly because of all the stupid stuff that he does and the stupid stuff that we do. I mean, material handling is a bunch of mistakes that we make. That's what it's all about. And this is going to be a detailed presentation, so you will need to pay attention to it, whether you're listening to it or watching it on the DVD and the slides. But there's a lot of information here, so you might have to watch it a couple times. Not that you want to watch me a couple times, but at least you could watch this a couple times to make sure you get the information. Material handling is a major cause of accidents among professional truck drivers and causes a lot of different types of injuries. You need to help and understand your own role in reference to preventing injuries from handling a lot of different materials and taking a lot of different postures in doing things as a truck driver, period. You want to be able to reduce the number of sprains, strains, overexertion injuries that happen, as well as all these other types of injuries that I mentioned earlier, like struck by, struck against. Uh, you even have slip, trip, falls, caught in, on, between, and then all those various types of accidents that lead to those injuries. Now, for this program to be effective, drivers, you must do this. You must understand your responsibilities in handling materials. Learn good body mechanics and lifting techniques. This is so overemphasized in society, but it's so underused. People do things wrong all the time, and they need to stop. Because the more you do things wrong, the higher the chances of having an injury. Learn these correct methods, and also use mechanical material handling devices, such as forklifts, dollies, carts, pallet jacks and take responsibilities and actions to implement these measures. That is so critical and important on your part. I always used to tell people who's responsible for safety, and it's not everybody, it's you. It's you individually that have to take that responsibility for safety. So why is this program important to you? Why am I even talking about it? Well, you are the professional and you are the one driving the truck. You are the one experiencing the issues and the problems that deal with material handling if you do that. Some drivers don't handle a lot of materials and some do. But there's many situations and those situations could cause you to have a serious accident, uh, a minor accident, or even death because material falling on you could be a very high exposure and at-risk behavior because you didn't watch out or plan for that. So professional drivers get hurt every day from material handling accidents, from handling things every single day. Think about the number of miss, near miss accidents that you have. You've probably had several on the way to work today. I mean, you might have rolled through a stop sign. I mean, you might have lifted something incorrectly, even a newspaper off your driveway or picking up a pencil. I remember a guy always telling me about even when you pick up a pencil, a hundred times, maybe the hundred and one time is going to cause you to have that back injury. So sometimes it's the technique, not necessarily the material. So your safety as a professional driver is very important to us, and it's very important to you and your family. Remember, when you see a problem, do something about it. Fix it. If material handling is your responsibility, take it seriously. Use mechanical material handling devices or use good body mechanics so you prevent those injuries. And don't take chances. You know, if you, if you want to take a chance, go buy a lottery ticket. But otherwise, don't take chances on lifting because eventually lifting incorrectly and doing things incorrectly will eventually cause you to have an injury. Take the opportunity for a positive action to prevent a circumstance that could lead to an injury. What is material handling? Here's the definition. I'll read it to you. Lifting or otherwise moving and or securing materials for transport or removal, or I guess adding on to the trailer or loading the trailer. This definition is so important because it deals with movement. The most common causes of material handling accidents are five different types. 
Yeah, there's probably 105 different types, but we're going to talk about five types because I only have about 17 minutes here. It's lifting hoods, pushing and lifting materials, pulling hand trucks and dollies, lifting and lowering bay doors or opening and closing trailer doors, and then loading and unloading. Lifting hoods. Even though I personally don't do this a lot, I know you do it, and you should do it at least once or twice a day. Why? How about a pre-trip inspection? Where you check the oil and look at the inside under that engine compartment and see if there's something wrong. So before lifting, unlatch the hood and pull up the corners so you break the seal and it's ready to go. Then you make sure that that landing area around you, and that could have happened even before this, is free from debris. Kick it out of the way, make sure you're aware of the slippery surfaces or oil and grease, or protect yourself or even move the truck to get away from that. Get a good grip on the hood and take a wide stable stance. A wide stable stance is a stance similar to a football player that's a lineman in order to get stability. Use your body momentum to bring the hood towards you and then up so that hood goes up. And lastly, always keep your back straight. That's the natural S curve of your body, which is actually straight where your back is. And then of course you want to maintain good balance. Pushing and lifting materials. Well, when you're pushing and lifting and moving materials, there's an exposure there, no doubt, but it's better than pulling. Therefore, it's better to push than it is to pull. However, everything has a risk, an at-risk behavior and exposure. So determine the weight, about how much does it weigh, so you know how much to support. Keep your shoulder width apart. Everything should be shoulder width, including your elbows in and your, and your legs in are approximately shoulder width apart, so whenever you're moving a material, uh, you're stable. Use the big leg muscles to move things, because your leg muscles are the largest muscles in your body. Don't use your weaker muscles of your back. That's where you get back injuries. Muscular injuries are usually from severe strains or hits, not usually from lifting things. Maintain a good balance, plan and chart your course so you're not going over a bunch of poor house-kept areas or an area that's blocked or strategically is not a good plan because it's a longer distance. And then lift with your legs and keep your back straight, that natural S-curve, that natural S-curve. Now pulling. Well, we're not supposed to pull, but a lot of times we have to because we have to pull carts and dollies and different types of manual or mechanical moving devices. So use your legs and upper body when pulling. Upper body in reference to keeping, again, your posture so it's solid. Get a firm grip, maintain a good balance, and keep a wide stance. Then maintain good momentum and make sure you chart your course again so that you're not going around poorly house-kept areas or blocked areas or areas with potholes or conditions to cause you to trip, fall, or mishandle the product to cause you a strain injury. Well, the next area where drivers frequently get hurt is lifting and lowering bay doors and opening and closing trailer doors. Maintain a good stance. And especially when opening a trailer door, you want to be sure that you kind of test that door. That latch often sticks, and if you stand right in front of that door when you open it, material could fall on you. We've had a very serious injury from a driver where a paper roll fell on that driver, and he is very seriously injured and still is injured today going through re rehabilitation. So check under the door, inspect that cargo, move aside, make sure you stand to the side, get a firm grip to the side, so that whenever you open that trailer door, you have that firm grip. And watch out for wind, too. I didn't mention that in the slide, but that's very important during windy conditions. Keep good balance. Keep your back straight. What we talk about? Natural S curve. Using your legs while opening and lowering the door or opening and closing the trailer door. Loading and unloading. Do you do this, drivers? I'm sure you do. Some of you do it a lot because you're in the household moving business. And some of, it do, some of you do it because um, the company requires you to do it. But most drivers don't. And that's why we're going to talk about a static position where you're driving a lot and you don't move a lot. But 
the first point here is don't do this if you don't need to. We have you as a driver and not a loader and unloader. However, flatbed drivers do a lot of lifting and moving and loading and unloading. Use mechanical devices if you can. Dollies, carts, forklifts, or somebody have somebody else load it for you on a forklift. And then use the key back safety principles that we'll talk about in a few slides from here. How about back safety for drivers? Back safety is so overused, but it's necessary and you need to hear it. Whether you hear it from another training program or hear it here, it's very important. Why? Because 25% of all cases, employees, not just drivers, they're disabled from back injuries. Have you ever had a back injury? If you've had one, you remember it. You know the pain you go through, and you know that standing, sitting, lying down hurts. It hurts always because it misaligns your discs. You can't be in that stable position to prevent yourself from feeling that pain. Over 1.2 million injuries happen a year that are back injuries. Now driving, do you drive? You're a professional driver, right? Don't you sit for a long period of time? That's called a static position. When you sit for long periods of time, a static position causes injury to your back. Do you stretch? You really do need to stretch drivers because just a simple stretch like this or, or to stretch your back or to just do some basic movements like that. And, and I can't tell you those stretches because every one of you have a different physique and I'd rather have you get those stretching exercises from your doctor. But maintain good posture while you're driving. In order to maintain that natural S curve when you're sitting, it's a good idea to have a lumbar support. You could buy those at a discount store for 10 or 15 bucks, or you could just use a rolled up towel to put behind the small of your back. Adjust your eyesight every three to five seconds and move your posture so you're not in the same static position all the time. That's very important. Now, every situation is different. No matter what you do out there, Every truck driver is different, their physique is different, the type of truck that they drive, the length of time they are on the truck. I mean, think about it. Your responsibilities for loading and unloading are different with different companies. TLC has over 500 companies and everything is different. The types of products and materials that you move, equipment and tools available. I mean, it's impossible for us to instruct you on all the exact things you need to do where there's so much variety in the types of clients and the types of drivers that we have. Using mechanical devices when you can, getting somebody else to do it. Uh, driver condition, you have to be alert, awake, and, and adjust your eyes every three to five seconds. That's a good way to do that. Weather makes a big difference too. I mean, how about the condition? When it's cold, you stiffen up. When you're warm, you're perspiring, and you're just aggravated. So there's a lot of conditions, unless it's perfectly favorable, and even when it's perfectly favorable, people still get hurt. Like Tim said, slip trips and falls happen in the summertime too. There are a lot of back disorders and causes of injury, and here's just some of them. What are they caused from? Poor body mechanics. Come on, didn't your first grade teacher teach you how to sit? Or don't you do a little bit of exercise, drivers? Come on, you have plenty of time to do that when you, when you get into a truck stop or get into a rest area. The physical environment around you, like I said, cold and hot. Your physical condition, alert, awake, feeling good about yourself. Don't you feel good about yourself, drivers? I try to. Previous injuries, attitude, stress. That dispatcher, boy, that dispatcher creates stress, don't they? How about the, those electronic logs? Does that create stress? No, it actually reduces stress. And then physical trauma. If you've had injuries in the past, that's going to affect your ability to do things in the future. Lifting principles. How about that? I guess I could give a demonstration of that, but I'm not. Or yes, I will. Maybe I'll just pull aside here and give you... If you're going to... If you're going to lift, you need to size up that load. How big is it? Can I lift it myself? Do I need some help doing that? You know, bend your knees and squat. Squat. It's real simple. Not bend like this. That's why even picking up a pencil could cause you to have a back injury because it's not how much you lift. It's the overall lifting of your body that's causing you the problem. Then place your feet close to the load. So if I had a load right here, I'd put my feet close to the load. 
and then I want to lift straight up, just like this. And we're not in a studio to really show you um, all the various types of things we could lift, but just to give you a basic demonstration. And then really, this is very important, is you don't want to twist. You want to pivot or turn. When you're lifting something and holding it, you pivot and turn like this. You don't twist. And then just reverse the good technique whenever you're putting back or lifting it and, and putting onto a shelf and going the reverse direction. And if it's a big load or a difficult load, get some help. Other key points to remember, and I'm just gonna go through these really, really fast, but plan rest stops. You know, lift and lower the load slowly. Don't be fast about it because an extra second or two is not gonna make a difference, and that's all it is, really, an extra second or two. Um, safest and quickest route, do not reach. Generally, anywhere between your, your neck and your waist is a good place to have materials and move them. Anytime you have to reach above or below, that's when your opportunities for more risk or an at-risk behavior by lifting incorrectly takes place. Tighten your abdominal muscles. You ever do that? Huh? You're supposed to develop a six-pack, not go get a six-pack. And don't obstruct your view. I mean, you're gonna trip and fall. I mean, look at the, the picture on the slide of people that try to carry way too much and they end up tripping and falling. So break it into smaller loads, make additional trips, no big deal. Ask for help and good housekeeping and cleanup is a big deal whenever you're loading and moving materials. Well, you're really excited about this slide because this slide means that I'm wrapping it up. That's it. So maintain a good posture, use good lifting techniques, whatever the task, like I said, even up picking up a quarter it's amazing how somebody will bend down to pick up a quarter and have a $5,000 back injury. Is that amazing? Just leave that quarter to somebody else if you don't want to use good body mechanics. Common sense is not a bad idea, but common sense isn't very common. So a lot of this stuff that we display in here, including what Tim talked about, what I'm talking about, what Tammy talks about in the next segment, is all about common sense. Do you have common sense? If not, get it. And then in the flatbed DVD, it's a really great DVD to look at on material handling. Mike Milnick, the actor in there, talks about the bridge technique. That's where we develop that good stance and how we move materials. So I recommend, recommend that you, you actually watch that DVD and look at some of the material handling that he does in there on a flatbed. And also, it'll also demonstrate the three points of contact that Tim talked about in preventing slip trips and falls. So happy lifting, drivers. I guess you're so excited, primarily because this is finishing up, so you're gonna have some music, and then next, Tammy will be talking to you about the prevention of motor vehicle accidents. Thank you, and good luck, and lift safe.